We have a couple options on how to solve here, but I would definitely go to Desmos because it's just so much easier. So here's what I would do, right? They're asking for the real solutions, the number of solutions, not the solutions themselves, but to a quadratic equation. So I'm going to type what I've got here. So x squared minus 12x um, plus 27. And notice when I do that, I have a parabola, which is what I want. And so I'm when I'm, they're asking for the number of real solutions, they're asking for the x-intercepts. So we can very clearly see there are two of them here, right? So at three and at nine. I don't care about the numbers. I just care how many there are. So that's it. There are exactly two. I'm done. Now, a couple other things. If we had added the equal zero, we still would see that there are two solutions, but now they're going to look like vertical lines because now what we're telling Desmos to do is solve this equation for us, and it's going to get values for x and plot them as vertical lines. It's just how Desmos works and how it interprets a situation like this. If we leave the zero off, it's basically thinking of it as like a y. So this is y equals x squared minus 12x plus 27, which is why it's graphing it as an actual parabola. So I prefer this way because if the answer were zero, then we would want to see it as, as x-intercepts. And we would be able to see the whole parabola um, kind of above or below the uh, x-axis. But if we graphed it with the equal zero, then we wouldn't see anything. We'd have a blank graph because what, it, what it's trying to do is graph the solutions, but there are no solutions. So you get nothing. It's a blank graph. So maybe that's okay. And you're like, oh, that, that proves my answer. But I feel like that's risky because maybe you just didn't zoom in the right place. And maybe that's why you're not seeing anything. So at least with the parabola, we see the full parabola. We see what's going on. Uh, just because some of you are going to need this for harder questions, I am going to show the algebraic way to do this. Uh, we would need to use something called the discriminant. Anytime we are asked for the number of solutions and we have an x squared, we can use this idea of the discriminant, which is the formula b squared minus 4ac. That is part of quadratic formula. It is part of the, uh, it is the part underneath the radical. And um, if we used the full quadratic formula, we'd be able to get the actual solutions. But if we just thought about the b squared minus 4ac part, we would get the number of solutions. And we have to get the a, b, and c by thinking about a parabola in standard form where the a and b and c correspond to the different components. So Again, this is not efficient. I would not do this here, but I'm just showing you because on other cases, we might not be able to use Desmos. So b squared minus 4ac, the b is negative 12, so that goes in there. Minus 4a is 1 because there's no number in front of the x squared, so it's 1. And c is 27. So 144 minus 4 times 27, I'm going to put that in the calculator, 4 times 27 is 108. And that is um, 147 minus 108 is 39. So what does that tell us? Well, it doesn't tell us there's 39 solutions, but if this discriminant is greater than zero, then there are two solutions. That's what that means. If it's equal to zero, then we have one solution. And if it's less than zero, then we have no solutions. I have a lesson on that. I definitely recommend that you watch for more detail, but this is a, a, an algebraic method that we might need to use in certain harder cases. But here, if I can, if I have the full equation basically, just go to Desmos, look at it, see what it is, then there's no chance of messing up.